Good morning, welcome to Morning Outlook. This is Kim speaking on Tuesday the 19th of May. So looking firstly at the data that's just come out, we've just seen the UK claimant count change, much bigger than expected, joint highest figure we've seen apparently. 856,000 versus 675 has very little effect on the pound uh, this morning, so the market suggests sort of ignored it basically, as they have a lot of data recently. So more more news to uh, ignore today, apart from uh, Trump may be speaking at some stage. We ha do have the G7 meetings on. I'm not too sure what time they start, but uh, they're held by satellite, so it doesn't make it very easily. And w w who's chairing it? Again, I'm not too sure at this stage, but I would be wary of volatility coming out of any of the majors speaking there. You know, the members of that G7, of those G7 meetings coming through. Now, aside of that, really the only data that, that, that I would look at is the Fed Chair, his, uh, Powell is testifying again at 3 p.m. But even then he has said his piece in, in the papers, into the press and everywhere else. And I think it's not gonna be full of any surprises. However, the markets still tend to move at the time he speaks. So be wary, 3 p.m. this afternoon. That's about it from the news site. So let's look at the technicals. The Euro solid shove, best day up it's had for a long time. I'm actually looking back here in this, well, many weeks. Uh, and it's uh, seen a bit of a follow through at the moment. However, whether that will continue, we'll see. Uh, there is some sort of divergence sitting across the four hourlies here. And I do think we might get a bit of a correction. If we don't get a correction, we'll get a consolidation. So that's what I'm expecting before another shove. But at the moment, they're both the pound, the Euro are overbought where they're sitting and uh, may, as I say we may have a bit more of a correction both have uh, targets underneath daily pivots etc which uh, may be may be uh, seen now taking the pound pounds again solid move up yesterday pretty almost like a big key reversal didn't quite manage to push through the previous day's highs but still solid all the same pushed up through to its weekly pivot in fact this morning it's pushed up again and run into the 4 hourly 50 I wonder if we'll get a bit more of a correction from that I'm just watching that at the moment it's uh, all sitting already sitting into its uh, daily R2 uh, R1 big pardon as well but still showing a bit of signs of uh, maybe a bit more movement there uh, again, targets as with the euro potentially uh, to that downside, but we'll see how it shapes. So that's the pound, the dollar yen. Well, the yen was a funny old beast yesterday. It shoved up, then it pulled back a bit, then it shoved back up, and it was a bit of a choppy old day. It broke through the uh, trend line. I was looking at this as, and thinking, well, this may be a swing trade earlier in the morning, the way it was moving so slowly, and it just pushed out. Uh, very suddenly and it softened when the other markets were, were, were actually strengthening suggesting it's a bit of unwinding of the safety trade so money running from uh, safety running out there the risk back on basically and uh, the, the, the market one of the key markets that's shown as a risk market showing that but it's 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 a complex a complex one the uh, yen when this sort of thing happens because it sort of wants to there's the money coming out and then there's the strength of the currency versus the dollar and it's it's got into a bit of a a mess however there is a a, a trending mess all the same but uh, it make it takes it off the table for me okay Aussie dollar Aussie dollar clearer it always was a little bit stronger in previous weeks here. It had been pushing up and making its route up there last week. It's slowed up quite quite a bit there, and it's probably not quite the flavour of the month. But however, technically it's pushing on through. I hear that China is starting to cause more trouble in terms of now um, imposing tariffs on barley from Australia. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. But China do do, do a, seem to be uh, creating trade wars of their own. Uh, at a time when you'd think they'd at least need to. But anyway, as you can see, Australian dollar here, four hourly picture. You can see that triple top across there. Is it is it going to roll over again? Well, we'll see this morning. Big bullish engulfing there, that previous four hourly bar. But again, with a lot of these markets, they're just showing those signs of being a bit overbought. And 
again consolidation or correction is, is what I would expect here if it consolidates maybe later in the day we'll get another shove up there if it starts correcting we may see the daily pivots hit similar sort of picture Canadian dollar Canadian dollar when I eventually get there there we go again odd one but it did mainly uh, fall in line oil prices pushed up we got the expiry of the oil contracts today we'll have a look at oil in a moment but uh, the Canadian dollar benefited like most other currencies against a softer U US dollar here and solid movement through even through the Asian session here's continuation a little bit of a redressment not much in between there again whether these markets can continue this we'll see but at the moment it's certainly as I say if you see consolidation around here I'll be looking for a shove later if it starts moving back maybe we'll will be running back towards pivots but uh, I think it may be the consolidation phase that sort of uh, we see more so okay moving on to the S&P's so the S&P's similar ish sort of movement actually to the uh, to the Aussie actually in price action it had been quite solid last week uh, last couple of weeks it had been a bit softer but uh, looking actually on the four hour and it's a bit more defined but we've just sort of seen it break through prior highs here on both occasions there it's actually just coming back retesting those sort of high those high levels that we saw uh, back in uh, uh, late April uh, are we going to just see this roll over again there is divergence again four hourlies may, may, may be seeing the, the beginnings of a bit of a correction uh, we'll have to wait and see this morning but there is certainly that uh, that softening and consolidation phase that we, or potential consolidation consolidation phase again any of these markets but if they don't start retracing this morning in any in, in, too much I would have thought that would probably be a sign that there, well there's strength behind the market just with a consolidation and we may see another surge later on today okay looking at oil then so I did say that the current contract expires yesterday well I'm just going to look at this in this picture but you see yesterday it was running oh, yesterday the last couple of days it's been running through yesterday it pushed on through back to $33 it's it's sitting in a better level now for some of the producers but it still needs to be higher however it's the, with the excitement of uh, everyone going back uh, or starting back manufacturing etc it's, it, it's seeing the benefits of such so where to today well we'll see how it uh, reacts later on when the contracts actually expires towards that time remember last time we, last month we went into a minus 37 dollars i don't think we'll see that people were expecting the worst but in fact this is uh, much more positive uh, with the bigger production cuts running through so um, it, it may if any retracements any bigger retracements may give opportunities we see two or three dollars coming off maybe that will give us opportunities to buy in right okay that's pretty much it for me i wish you a great day as, as i say anything really now to be watching for well it's not much you can do about the g7 meetings but fed chow's uh fed chow fed chair powell uh speaks at 3 p.m have a great day bye for now mm -hmm.